it's obvious that Iceland is absolutely, well, it's, it's, it, it, it is beyond the margin of what most people would think is a reasonable currency area. It's very, very, very small, and a large number of, uh, uh, though distant, and a very large number of contracts are in any case denominated in real terms or in foreign currency. And that's, of course, a reflection of the history of monetary policy making. And in the normal circumstances, that's an environment in which um, having your own currency clearly imposes costs. There's no doubt it imposes costs. Uh, and that will be even true if you had a very competent central bank that established credibility, which might take quite a long time and might actually be very difficult. So clearly I can understand the logic of getting rid of the currency. But it's not, as it seems to be suggested by some people, a costless decision. Uh, the general point here is very simple. If you have an economy which is in which the real exchange rate, the equilibrium real exchange rate is likely to be very unstable. Uh, and this seems to me a currency, a country in which the equilibrium real exchange rate is likely to be very unstable. If you have a fixed exchange rate with a country which doesn't have the same reasons for instability, though I think the shift to the Canadian dollar is actually very sensible from this point of view, but leave that aside. If you uh, uh, use a currency that doesn't have the same real instabilities, then some other prices must adjust very, very quickly. And in general, that basically means the prices of labor. Now, we, it's clear that the real wage here is very flexible, but that doesn't show that the nominal wage is very flexible. I don't know whether it is. In most developed countries, nominal wages are very, very, very sticky. And that's why I would stress that I don't want to get into you because you can make reasonable arguments on both sides here. I would stress that the Irish story isn't over. Irish debt is denominated in euros. The, the national wage level and the national price level is going to fall in euros for a long time. It already has fallen a long time. So the real burden of debt there too has risen, which is why many of us think Ireland is going to actually have to default. So the story isn't over. Uh, the pros and cons are very unclear. Um, but it is, all I want to stress is while in the case of Iceland, and particularly given its monetary history, you can make a perfectly good argument for giving up the currency, it's not a costless option because it does give you some degree of flexibility. And there are other reasons. So I've always thought there was another reason. It goes back to um, um, Bob Mundell's optimal currency theory. There are other reasons for having another currency than those than the classic trinity that Haider uh, listed. All I suggest is that you have a very, very serious debate about this before you do it. But I'll just make one final point. I'm really completely unpersuaded that joining the European, is European Union is necessary for this purpose. If you want to have somebody else's currency as a small country, you don't need to join the EU, and you have to evaluate all the other changes that go with that. They may be beneficial, they may not, but it's a separate thing. That's all I wanted to say on this. Otherwise, as I said, I think I come away, interestingly, quite optimistic um, about uh, this country and its prospects. Uh, and I'm not going to get in, in any way into the politics. And I do understand fully the tremendous real income shock that people have experienced here.